So in this class, we will learn about an important concept of group theory, which is called uh, commutator subgroups. Okay. So uh, let me write down commutator and commutator subgroup. Okay, so let me define what is it, okay? So definition. Let uh, G be a group. And a and B are elements of G. Then we define A inverse B inverse AB to be the commutator of A and B. Very easy definition, okay, and uh, is denoted by like this in bracket a b, which is which we denote by a inverse b inverse a b, okay. Uh, also any element of G, which is of the form AB, which is A inverse B inverse AB, uh, any element, let's call it G any element G which is of the form this is called a commutator. Okay, so uh, as the lecture progresses, we will slowly see, see that why these commutators are important. Uh, we will come to know at the end of maybe, uh, maybe tomorrow's lecture why these commutators are important. Okay, so before we uh, proceed the important properties, let's write down some basic properties of commutators. Okay, so first property is the a commutator is E if and only if uh, X and Y commute. Okay, is this uh, kind of uh, understandable? Yes. Is this kind of uh, okay to everyone? If X and if the commutator is E, then X and Y commute. So this is if you want a proof, it's just it's just uh, I mean. It's very simple. See, x y is e means what? What is what is the commutator x y by definition? X inverse y inverse x y is z, right? But what is x inverse y inverse? That is nothing but y x inverse x y, which is e. Now, what we can do? We can multiply by y x on both sides. So, sorry. So we can multiply by yx on both sides. So what do we get? 
So we get, so there is nothing here, okay? So we get yx, yx inverse is just e. So exy is yxc. So which means xy is yx. And this can be also reversed. The implications can also be reversed. So it's just, it is if and only, okay? So this is a very easy property. Also, uh, let's write down the second property. G is abelian uh, if and only if E is the only uh, is the only commutator uh, e is the only commutator of G. Is this obvious? See, if G is of abelian, then anything you write like this, any x comma y you write, which is x inverse, y inverse, x, y, this, if it is abelian means you can change the order. That means you can write this as y inverse, x inverse, x, y, and then it will result into E. So whatever way you write, uh, whatever commutators you take, if G is abelian, it is going to uh, end up giving just T. And also it's the reverse implication is also correct. If any commutator is just T, it is just very easy to see that G is abelian. It's just obvious. Okay. So I'm not going into details of proving this because, uh, yeah, I, I'll not prove this. I'll leave to all of you to check. Okay. The fourth one is, this might be a good idea, uh, sorry, fourth one or third one, third one. I think this is a good idea to have a look at this carefully. So what I'm saying is xy is yx into the commutator of xy, okay? Is the proof obvious? Proof is very easy because see, yx xy is uh, what? It is yx x inverse y inverse xy. So first this will cancel out and then this will cancel out. Right? And then what will remain is xy, right? So the proof is not a big deal. But what you should understand is, see, uh, See, if, if a group is, if X and Y commute, then what should have happened? Suppose X and Y commute, then what will you get? You will get X, Y is Y, X, right? Isn't it? Yes, sir. So if, if X and Y commute, then you will get X, Y is Y, X. But what is happening in this case is that X, Y, X and Y doesn't commute, but somehow this kind of kinds of measures the you know, non abelianness That is, this is the factor by which this X and Y doesn't commute. If this becomes E, then the, then the non abelianness is almost zero. That is, it commutes. Okay. If this is not E, then there is a bit of non abelianness involved and this somehow measures the non abelianness of X and Y. See, whenever I say things like measures the non abelianness, I'm using vague terms. Those, these are all not uh, very well quantified terms when I say measures the non abelianness. But it is important to also understand maths like this to, uh, to understand maths in a very precise technical way and to also understand maths philosophically. So that is why I I tried to emphasize on this that the commutator x, y somehow measures the non abelianness of x and y. Okay. Uh, next, next important property is x comma y inverse is y x. Okay. So let us try to uh, prove it. Okay. So let's write down. So commutator of x1 y inverse is same as x inverse y inverse x y whole inverse 
Now again, you can use the property that G1, G2 inverse is G2 inverse G1 inverse, which is so so called shoe socks lemma. So this is this will be equal to what Y inverse, X inverse, X inverse whole inverse, and then Y inverse whole inverse. So this is same as Y inverse X inverse. So this is X and Y, which is Y is okay. That's another property, and then uh, one more property. Uh, let me write it here. Five. Define uh, G power S to be like this, something like this. Uh, when I write G power S, I mean S G. S inverse, okay. Just a notation, not a big deal. So where S is in G, this is not the usual G power. That is G power an integer. So G power five would have been G dot G dot G five times. This is not that. This is G power some element of G, which is I define it as S G S inverse. So what I am claiming is my claim is this: if I take a commutator. And then I consider this power s, that is same as commutator of x s y s. Okay, that is my claim. So let's uh, try to prove this quickly. Again, it is not very difficult. So if I say x y s, that is same as x inverse y inverse x y s. Which is by definition is S inverse X inverse Y inverse X Y S. Now what we can do is we can cleverly uh, between every X and Y yes, we can yes. okay S and then S inverse right okay yeah S and then S inverse okay thank you. This is S. So now what we can do is between every X inverse, Y inverse, and X and Y, I can keep substituting a S inverse S. Okay, S inverse S, X inverse, again S inverse S, Y inverse. So these terms I can, uh, sorry, not those terms. Ah, correct, these terms. Yeah, I can keep plugging in in between because these are all E, right? So X. And then S inverse S Y S inverse, and then I can group this carefully so that this becomes S X inverse S inverse, and then S. Uh, I think so. You put an extra X inverse. Yeah. Uh, which one should I just remove then? Uh, the second X inverse. Yes, so I think second, this one is it? No. Yes, sir. Ah, this is not the. Yeah. No, then y inverse should come. No. Then even s inverse s inverse s. Ha. Huh, so maybe what I should do is let's keep this x inverse. Uh, maybe let's uh, now. Is it okay? Yes, sir. Okay. So, and this will become uh, so. This is now we regroup this as one, and then uh, next as one more, and then this as one, and this as one. So it will become as. Y inverse S inverse S X S inverse S Y S inverse, right? And now you see this can also be written as S X inverse inverse whole inverse S Y inverse uh, 
sorry, not. Uh, this can be written as uh, S, S inverse X, S. No, I think I'm not doing it correctly. This will be S, X, S inverse, whole inverse. This will be S, Y, S inverse, whole inverse. This will be S, X, S inverse, S, Y, S inverse. So you see this is of the form commutator of S, X, S inverse and S, Y, S inverse, which is nothing but X S Y S. So, is that okay? So, yes. Yeah. X S inverse. The whole inverse becomes S inverse X inverse S, right? Uh, can you can you tell me which one you are talking about? Just one minute. Are you talking of this? Yes, this sir. One? Yes, sir. Uh, when you take inverse, what will happen is the uh, the order will change, right? So it will become S inverse, inverse, X inverse, oh, yeah, yeah. S inverse. So it will be this only. Yeah. Is that okay? Yeah. So G1, so what you should remember is if you have G1, G2 inverse, it is equal to G2 inverse, G1 inverse, not G1 inverse and G2 inverse, okay? So I kept using this term today, which, which I kept saying. So this, this lemma is somehow called as shoe socks lemma. Let me explain this and I think we'll end the class today. Okay. Why it is called uh, shoe socks lemma. And this is, uh, I, I have gotten this uh, terminology from the book Galleon and why they call it shoe socks lemma is so uh, you can think you know g1 as you can think e as your uh, let's say normal self okay i'll explain what normal self means and let's say g1 is uh, wearing uh, socks okay so if g1 is wearing socks okay g1 inverse will be something which you have to do to make it to normal self again. That is, you are not wearing socks. So what will you do? If G1 is wearing socks, so what will be G1 inverse? Remove socks. Huh? Removing socks. Okay, very good. And uh, suppose my G2 is, let's say my, uh, should I write? Let's say my G2 is wearing shoes. Okay. So what will be G2 inverse? Again, removing shoes, right? Uh, I should have named it the other way because you don't, uh, shall I rename it? I call it G1. I call this as G1 and I call this, this as G2. Okay, I just rename it. Now, what is the meaning of G1, G2? G1, G2 means you have to, uh, or maybe the maybe the naming was correct. Let me let me keep the naming. Okay. What is the meaning of G1, G2? That means first you wear socks and then you wear the shoes, right? So you are in a position where you are wearing the shoes and in, you have socks inside it won't, right? The usual way you wear. You can say I wear the funny way I first wear shoes and then put the socks on it, but we don't do that usually. Okay. So suppose the usual way we have owned, we have owned the socks and then the shoes. Now if you have to remove it, so first see if you wear socks and shoes, which one do you wear first? First the socks and then the shoes, right? But inverse is what? Inverse is removing all of it, right? So when you start removing, which one you remove first? Shoes. shoes. Yes. So you remove the whatever you have owned last you remove it first so that is a analogy to understand this okay that is why this is called a shoe socks lemma okay so so interesting sir <laughs> yeah this is this all credit goes to joseph a galleon it is there in the book of contemporary abstract algebra okay so uh, i think 
I will end this session today and uh, we will start in the next class. Okay. So have a good day. Bye-bye. Uh, Bye. 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 Bye.